Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Uzair. In this video, we are going to talk about the second method of amortized analysis, that is the accounting method. So what does the um, accounting method actually talks about? So first of all, it is saying that assign a random cost to the ith operation where one unit of amount pays for one unit of work. So in this case, our random cost will be the amortized cost, that is CI cap. So in order, when we talk about operations, it is better if we consider some kind of data structure. So let us revisit the augmented stack that we saw earlier. So augmented stack. And I request you to see the previous video, which is uh, talking about the aggregate method and then come back to this video. Uh, because here also we will be discussing the dynamic tables uh, about which we discussed in the previous video. So in case of augmented stack, uh, let us, uh, there are three operations as you know, push, pop and multi-pop, right? So now, uh, let us assign a random cost. Uh, so let us assign push as 2, random cost, pop as 0 and multi-pop as 0, right? But as you know, the actual cost, let us call the actual cost as CI, whereas this is CI cap right this is ci cap the amortized cost so the actual cost of these operations we know that it is all our order of one order of one and the worst case is order of n but let us consider it as order of one uh, because we are talking about amortized time complexity so now so this is what is said in the first step now talking about the second step what we need to do is that uh, if the actual cost of operation is less than the allocated amount ci cap so here allocated amount ci refers to the amortized cost and if the actual cost now this actual cost is basically our ci if it is less than the allocated amount ci cap remaining amount is saved and can be used later for costlier operations so for example uh, if we assign a cost of suppose 3 for a particular operation whereas that uh, operation could be performed at a lesser cost of like 1 so the, that difference of amount is basically saved for uh, and that can be used later on for more costlier operations. So let us consider this statement uh, with the help of this example. Let us continue it in this example itself. If we make four, four pushes in the stack like 3, 6, 9, 2 and I have assigned the amortized cost CI cap for the push operation as two units. Whereas all these operations will just take one unit, a push operation just takes one unit or order of one time. So the balance that I'll have after all these four operations will be equal to for the first operation 2 minus 1. That means uh, the required amount was actually 1 whereas 2 was assigned for that operation. The same way 2 minus 1 4 times basically the balance will be four units right so these four units of balance i can use for the other operations like pop and multi pop for which i have done an underestimation uh, for pop i have given just zero unit of time whereas it will at least require one unit of time same case goes with multi pop so these four units can be used later on to perform such kind of pop operation the balance will will definitely change but in spite of assigning a, a lower cost for these operations as compared to what is uh, the actual cost, I can still do the operation without uh, caring about this uh, random cost that I have assigned over here. So another statement that is really important is that the bank balance must never be negative. So uh, whatever cost est estimation we do, let, let it be an overestimation or an underestimation, until a particular time, the sum of the total uh, amortized cost should always be greater than uh, or equal to the sum of the total actual cost that is incurred by all the operations performed until now. So this statement should always hold true. This is actually the actual cost incurred while this is the amortized cost that is assigned. Right? This should always hold true that the bank balance must never be a negative. Then only our amortized analysis will be a correct analysis of the time complexity of the operations that we are performing on the data structure. So let us revisit the dynamic tables. 
so I have explained clearly what, uh, how dynamic tables work in the previous video. Please go and watch it if you have not watched it until now. So let, let us consider this as a dynamic table of size 8 and let us try to understand and this is a dynamic table of size 16. Let us try to understand uh, what might have happened until now. Uh, and uh, let us assign an amortized cost of 3 units for the insert operation, right? So now uh, over here for this operation, uh, uh, let us think that the balance is 0, 0, 0. Uh, if you have watched the previous video, you will understand that why I am writing the balance as 0 for all these operations. And the balance for this operation, now this is uh, for this uh, insertion, the fifth insertion, over here we have to actually copy all these four elements that have been inserted until now. For this fifth insertion, balance will remain as 2. Then for this one also it will remain as, uh, the balance will remain as 2 because uh, we have assigned 3 units but it is actually taking only 1 unit because there is no overflow in these cases. Same goes over here and same over here. So until now the total balance, the total balance is actually 8 units, right? Now when we go to do the uh, ninth insertion, so this is basically our ninth insertion. Apart from doing this insertion, we also actually have to copy all these elements into our doubled dynamic array whose size has been doubled when we do the ninth insertion. So for copying all these elements, do we actually have the balance? Yes, we do. The balance that was saved from these insertions, this eight units of balance can actually be used to copy all these elements. And from the ninth insertion onwards, only one unit of uh, time will be required, right? So this all can be copied and uh, then finally it will be zero again, right? But for the ninth insertion, again, we are not doing it with the help of the balance, but for the three units that is already assigned for each insertion. So for this insertion, two units will be saved because one unit will be assigned. Same goes for here for all these insertions, right? So when we go to do the 17th insertion, there at the end I have done the 16th insertion. So this balance will be used, this balance of 2 because uh, required was 1 whereas we assigned 3 units for each and every insertion. So this 16 units of time will be used for 17th insertion. And if we need to find out the time complexity of n insertions, so that will be equal to the time or complexity of a single insertion or the amortized time complexity of a single insertion which is 3 of a single insertion into the number of insertions or the number of operations that is n. So this will be order of 3n or is equal to order of n. Now this is the same complexity that we found out for the dynamic tables time complexity of n insertions in case of aggregate method. So that was all about accounting method. Uh, first of all, I explained it uh, with the help of a single example like augmented stack. Then we talked about dynamic tables. So stay tuned for the next video. In the next video, we will talk about the last method of amortized analysis that is the potential method. Until then, subscribe my channel and please share it as much as possible so that it can reach to everyone out there. And do let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions. And also if you like the video.